Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about face shields. So let's get started. I'm going to show you first in Tinkercad what I did. So this is the face shield that I made in Tinkercad. This is not for hospitals. In fact, hospitals probably wouldn't accept these um, because they don't have coverage from the top. Hospitals are a much more dangerous environment than the outside world, so they need slightly different protection. I make these for those, but I don't have the capacity to make hundreds of these. I, I just don't. I can only run four or five printers at one time. I only have 50 amps of power coming to my house. Um, so if I try to run a sixth printer and then my water heater turns on, it pops the breaker. <laughs> um, I tried. The um, I also only have a limited amount of this stuff, the actual little plastic films. I only have a hundred. Uh, and also, my local hospitals don't need them. My hair's a mess from taking that thing off. <laughs> uh, my local hospitals don't need them. They're not short on PPE. And I can't really afford to be mailing out a whole bunch of these things. I just don't have that kind of money. But this is something I came up with. This is an ultra lightweight, ultra fast version of my face shield. Um, you can see I got rid of this structure that was on the inside here. Which took um, something like 15 minutes off the print time. <laughs> um, not quite, more like 10 minutes. I can print these in about 16 or 17 minutes. Even with a 0.4, this is with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. So let me switch back to the other view. So even with a one, with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, I can print four of these per hour on one printer. Phase mode, sequential printing. Um, it's pretty darn neat how effectively that works. And then this one here was actually printed on my CP01 from Creality with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle over extruded to 1.2 millimeters, and it works great. You can't do it in 20 minutes. It takes more like 25 to 28 minutes, but still it works. You can see the same thing here. You know, it's not perfect. You can actually see some tearing. Oop. You can see that roughness there. That's because I'm really, really, really pushing the volumetric flow of the printer. Like, um, I probably should slow down another 20%. But they are solid. They hold up. Oop, I broke that one. <laughs> okay, maybe I need to make that part there a little bit bigger. Okay. Maybe it's not quite hot enough. I'm running at 240 Celsius. That seems it's not damaged, so that just seems like a temperature separation. Like it's um, it's not hot enough to melt to the other piece of plastic. So I will have to work on that. But the the part itself is plenty strong. Nothing breaks. So good thing I, I want to do the green ones. Do that too. No, the green ones are fine. Oh no, they break too. I guess if you if you fold them in hard enough. They will break that joint, so I will have to work on that. Make the joint larger, make it a diagonal. So, good thing I only printed a couple of them. But, um, hey, I don't hide nothing. <laughs> um, these I'm doing in, well, maybe because they're silk. I don't know. I just, the other, I had a roll, you can see up there it's missing. I took the phyllo silk roll I had up there, and I, that's feeding the Chiron right now. Um, also these... I got from Dollar Tree. I finally found a source for these. Oh, I don't have any packaging space. It's three headbands. It comes three different colors, but you just cut them so it's no longer a loop to go around your head, and the holes that are in them work perfectly. I just fold it over in half, and I stretch it through there, and it works absolutely perfectly as a headband. I can't find elastic anywhere. I ordered some off eBay, but it's been a week and it's still not here, so who knows if it'll ever actually arrive. Come on, give me that strand. I got a little strand here I gotta capture. <laughs> uh, gotcha. There you go. I don't keep it from extruding properly, it'll pull the rest of it up. And it's still pulling, but there it goes, it just dropped. Okay. So we should be okay now. Come on, get out of my way so I can grab it. There we go. Little zit. Just had to grab that and get it out of the way. ABS is um, finicky with sticking to the bed, so if there's a piece of filament already there, that'll actually pull the newly printed stuff off the bed. So you got to make sure that's removed. So the um, I'll put a drop of CA on all these so I can use them. 
Does this one do the same thing? No. Okay, so this PLA is fine. This is filamentum traffic red. So that works fine. Okay. So it might just be not getting hot enough. I'll slow down a little bit. It's okay if it takes an hour and ten minutes instead of an hour. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> so what am I making them for? Well, I made these super fast for consumer use. Okay. So these are only 10 millimeters thick. And they print in roughly 20 minutes. Um, the idea is for local businesses. Some of my local businesses, the critters working in the shops, you know, the clerks and grocery store employees and stuff like that, have expressed interest in some form of face shield protection. So I was like, okay, I can do that. So this first batch of green ones that I made, once I correct this, um, these are going to Dollar Tree. And um, I will keep making them for as long as I can get materials. I mean, I have plenty of filament. <laughs> I have plenty of time. It's just a matter of getting more elastic. And um, I might see if there's anybody local who has to go into Albuquerque for work and see if they can hit a couple Dollar Trees for me and just grab up all these bands. Um, or maybe I'll take a trip in. Maybe tomorrow. And then, of course, you know, can I get any more of these? I mean, I, without, the, without the plastic, I can't make any more. I can make them, but they're useless. You know, this isn't going to protect you very much without the plastic to to go on it to actually be a face shield and um yeah so um then uh, once i'm done dollar tree uh, mcdonald's employees have expressed interest and the smith's grocery store employees have expressed interest so i'm going to make some for mcdonald's dollar tree and smith's so if you don't have any hospitals around you who need them and you want to save a lot of time printing a simpler face shield um, ask. Don't just show up with a whole bunch of them because they might not use them. <laughs> then you just wasted all your time printing them. But ask the employees, would you be interested in some PPE protection, some face shields? And if they say yes, make a dozen of them up and bring them to them. You know, cleaning is pretty easy. Uh, most restaurants have a three sink um, cleaning station. Just dip them. First one, second one, third one. That'll be good enough to kill any virus that might be on them. Hang them up overnight. Um, these aren't, you know, high-end protection, you know, it's not gonna, it's just going to give them a, a little bit of peace of mind with a, a small increase in protection from direct, you know, being coughed on, sneezed on, stuff like that. It's also, um, good for their customers, because by wearing this, all right, with or without a mask, now if I cough or just breathe out, Okay, because breathing out will propel the virus. Um, now this is going to be pushing it down onto the front of my shirt. So now I'm not putting um, virus all over the products that I'm putting out on the shelf. And so now I'm passing less of that to the customer base. So it's a lot safer for the customers as well. Um, how safe? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. But... I can't imagine it's not safer than just breathing out onto all the products on the floor. Because <laughs> it can persist for up to a day on cardboard. And of course, the customers are breathing out onto the um, products, so you're not stopping it. But there's also something called viral load. Okay, The more of it that's there, the higher the chance of it actually being able to infect you. So the less of it we can spread around, the better. So I will have this on Thingiverse. I think I already posted. Yeah, I already posted this on Thingiverse. I'll have the link down below. If you want to print these, the G code I include is made for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle printer. You may have to slow down if your printer can't handle it. Do make sure you perform that, this test to make sure it's actually solid. I'm going to update the design to increase the surface area of this joint here. So do give that a little push in. Make sure that doesn't break. Um... I think I just need to increase the temperature. So I'm going to try to go to 245, see how it behaves, see if it likes it. Um, or go to a lower layer height so I have more thermal transfer per volume of plastic. Um, go from there. That's it. I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching my video. I'm going to try to release like two or three a week over the next few weeks. See how well that works. You know, simple videos like the next one's going to be this. Sneak peek, it's all you get. <laughs>
So I will see you guys later. Thank you very much. Don't forget to check out the links I have below. I have links to interesting stuff down there. And um, that is, they are affiliate links. So I earn a living. And as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Specific wording Amazon requires. So I want to keep Amazon happy. That's it. You guys have a great day.